Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today I'm going to be doing a playthrough of the PC version that was just released of Twilight Struggle Red Sea Conflict in the Horn of Africa. This is designed by Jason Matthews and the board game is uh, published by GMT Games. This PC version was done by Playdeck and they have done several versions including um, or several PC versions I should say of other GMT games. Things like Fort Sumter and Labyrinth, as well as the uh, original Twilight Struggle. So, um, let's take a look and see what, uh, what we've got here. So, you can play offline, which is basically playing solo. You can play online. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. Playing offline doesn't necessarily mean solo. You could hot seat it, I think. Um, you could play online against another, you know, another person over the... Uh, interwebs so to speak and uh or you know the uh the solo version actually let me show you this so um this is a saved game i'm just going to close that out and now we will go to create game so here you have you have see it says ai player for the americans and it has me here for the uh, soviets now you can click on this and change it and it has the Red Sea bot so as you can see up here the bot does not support the additional turn game mode we'll talk about that in a second but the bot I believe is based on the the uh, the bot from the board game which was I think done by Jason Carr so uh, that's kind of the more traditional board gamey experience or you can opt here's the two player where you can actually have two people playing on the same machine and then the AI player, and the AI is more of a, you know, generative AI kind of, you know, uh, more flexible, I guess. The, the bot uses kind of a scripted approach um, in looking at things, and, you know, the decision tree is, you know, not, I don't want to say it's simplified or simple or anything along those lines, because it obviously works very well. But it's not um, as reactive, maybe, as, as the AI player is. So I've been playing against the AI player, and it does put up quite the challenge, I will say that. So I'm going to play here as the Soviets. I've played as both sides, um, and I've won as both sides. But I think the, um, you know, just for this example, we'll play as the Soviets, since it's kind of already set up that way. So we click Start Game. It loads up fairly quick. This is a game that has a fairly small footprint in terms of hard disk space. Um, it's not overly complicated. Obviously, it's based on a board game. Um, it's very well done. Play deck stuff is always really well done UI wise and everything and the game of course that it's based on is a rock-solid game So it's you know, there's nothing really to be afraid of here um, There's a whole lot of a whole lot of goodness right now in this thing. So we're gonna hit uh, Continue here. So before I do that though There's two turns each turn consists of seven action rounds. You can see that here uh, I kind of I kind of glossed over it, but there's also the additional turn that you can add, which adds a third turn, and uh, incorporates um, cards from the original Twilight Struggle game, which, if you're unfamiliar with that, covers the entirety of the Cold War, basically the you know right after the aftermath of World War II, all the way up to 1989. So um, this one is obviously a small slice of that. Um, it's kind of a zoomed in small slice look at the um, kind of the basically the Horn of Africa area as it says right in the uh, right in the game title so you have uh, the Arabian Peninsula and the Horn of Africa pretty much and the closely surrounding areas so to speak so got a nice little picture here of Gerald Ford there's a lot of historical tidbits and flavor in here as there is in the board game, as you would expect. Um, so you will see some, some of that as we go through. All right, so you start off every turn with a headline phase. Basically, it's an event phase. So when we look at the cards, each card is gonna have an event on it. So this is an event. Now this one, uh, there are th basically three types of cards, let's say, that uh, are represented by the various stars and the colors on the stars. So this star is a this is a neutral event because it's a gray star with a white border. This one would be this one would be a uh, U.S. event. It's a white star with a blue border, 
and the number inside the star is the ops point value of it. Basically, you can play the card for its event or you can play the card for its ops value, and there are several ops you can do, several operations you can do, and we'll see those here once we get into the game. And then this would be a Soviet event. And again, this is a pretty interesting one because it's got three op points, which is pretty good. There are a few four op point cards, but most of them are ones and twos. And then there are a handful of threes and uh, only, a, only a few fours that you will encounter in the game. Um, some of them will have this asterisk next to the event name that tells you that once you play it as an event, it gets discarded uh, from, the, from the game permanently. Other events you can play discard it and then it gets shuffled back into the deck and you may see it again in the same game so we need to pick one of these for our headline and that gets played as an event and it goes by the op point number so if you play the higher number you would get your event played first in the event of a tie the u.s gets it so it's one of the advantages that the u.s has in this game both sides have slight advantages um I've found the the Soviets might be a little easier to play, maybe, maybe, but it's it's hard to tell because the game is very well balanced. So we do have, uh, like I said, this is a Soviet card. So like the Derg here, it adds to USSR influence in Ethiopia, which is kind of useful because Ethiopia is one of our, um, oh shoot, I forget what it's called now. Um, as you can see right here, they've got the uh, Flashpoint. That's what it is. It's a Flashpoint country. So we have Ethiopia and Somalia, and they're marked by this symbol, which is vaguely reminiscent of the Flash, if you're into comic books. <laughs> um, so we want to find one that we want to play. So if Ethiopia is controlled, um, see, this one will let us, and it doesn't say. Some of them will say you can't use it as a headline. I know the U. I um, I know I saw. I've seen one, but I'm going. Oh, it's the uh, OAU. I think is what it is. We're going to play this as our headline card. Now it'll go in. The U.S. played a two-pointer, so they're going to go first. That's why theirs came out first, right? So they're going to flip. Um, well, they they took one of they took our one and only influence point out of Somalia. Somal Somalia is now basically neutral. Now we're going to flip Ethiopia on them. And we get into the game. So this is turn one for the Soviets, as I mentioned, or round one rather. Seven rounds per turn. This is turn one. At the end of round seven, we'll go into uh, the second turn. And at the end of that, the game is over. It can end early too. There are some, uh, some sudden death conditions. Okay, so first thing we are going to do is pick what card we want to play first. Now, as you can see, I have one, two three U.S. cards and one, two, three remaining Soviet cards. And I also have one, two uh, kind of neutral cards that can be used by either side. Uh, the U.S. has one card more than we do because they have the Romania card, which if you played the base Twilight Struggle game, there was a China card. It's, the Romania card works similar to that. Basically, you get a victory point if you're holding it at the end of the game. So what do we want to play? So whenever you play a card that it belongs, the event belongs to your opponent, the, that gets played, the event gets played automatically. So if I played this, since I have one influence in Ethiopia, the US would get two in Sudan. So I don't want to do that, right? Maybe we go big right off the start. Um, now, if I play this as an event, that would prevent the U.S. from playing the Ogaden War. But if I play it for its ops points, that's three ops points, which is a pretty good number. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play it for influence. And I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to put one here. And uh, let's see. Let's put one, see I can't put one in Somalia yet. Let's put one in, do I wanna go Kenya or Djibouti? Now the US is probably gonna play a coup next, so you'll get to see a coup as well. We'll go with Kenya. Okay, and we move on to the uh, US turn here. 
So when it's thinking, it'll show you up here. As the bar goes down, it means they're close to making a move. Opponent event. So we don't know what they're going to do yet. We get to do our event first. Okay. Continue. And it worked. So this one, um, I think it's a four to six. You get the... Uh, you get to take over Yemen. As you can see, Yemen is now in our control. And surprise, he's going for a coup. And he's going for Ethiopia. And the scoring card got pulled out. And I got four victory points because of that, but they flipped Ethiopia. And now DEF CON is at two, which means I can't coup to try and flip it back because that could set off nuclear war. And so that was actually a pretty clever move. As I said, the AI does things that are pretty damn intelligent in this game. All right, oh uh, boy. Well, I need to take Somalia, I guess. Somehow, some way. So I can't get Egypt because they, uh, actually I could get Egypt, Egypt, Sudan, South Yemen, Yemen. Yeah, well, Saudi Arabia would be tough because that's a, uh, but if I could put something in Egypt. Hmm. The Derg. Gonna play this as the event. That'll put us in there as well. It costs uh, two ops points to put one level of influence in a uh, in a contested or controlled area here. So that was good. That's basically four ops points worth of influence I just stuffed in there. Now I think he'll probably go after Sudan next so that he can, um, because this one would not necessarily, it's not going to lower the, uh, the DEF CON. So it's a safe one. Coup. Oh, we will find out. So I get Madagascar, but he's going to coup now. Oh no, he went for influence. Okay. Interesting. All right. These cards are not good. <laughs> they are not good. Um, let's see, what's he gonna do next? Fantastic. Uh, let's see here. I don't want to play that one. I really don't. Let's try this. And we'll do Sedan and Egypt. Goes around, comes around. All right, let's see. I'm gonna coup again. Playing a space race card. Bum bum ba bum. They failed. All right. 
Oof, both of these I don't really love, let me tell you. We'll try it. Hey, hey, all right. That lets us remove one influence from one country after the headline phase next turn. Play event. Okay. I really would like to keep this, but um, I kind of can't. So what we will do... Hmm. Let's see what kind of coup opportunities we have. Just Ethiopia, which would not work. So that's a, that's a no. <laughs> that is a no. Let's do this. <clears throat> hmm. Put it there. A little cushion. Make it a little bit harder for them to uh, flip it on me. Uh, they give me one where I can't really draw the card. Alright. I feel like I'm doing pretty pretty much okay so far. So the DEFCON bounces back to three as we start. I have six a six victory point lead. Um, but I kind of need to hold serve in a lot of this area here. So now we get to, get to pick our uh, our headline card, Mister Nyet. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. So mine gets to go first. And we drop it to two, which makes it harder to coup. And we will be zipping that out of there, and we'll also zip this out of there. All right. Definitely worthwhile. But on the other hand, my hand of cards is terrible. I have all US events. So this is going to be really difficult for me here. I may, may remove one influence. All right, easy enough. All right, what do we want to do here? What does this do? Hmm, well, I don't want to play that. That's a good card for them, man. I'm going to end up having to probably use one of these. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I hope they have all Soviet events because this is going to be a rough turn, man. see what he does I'm thinking it's gonna be Ethiopia or Somalia the real question is which one is it could be Sudan I suppose but I'm thinking it's got to be Ethiopia or Somalia and it's Ethiopia hmm okay that was this is his turn Wondering why I couldn't play a card. It's not my turn. Okay. Yeah, so we're playing each other's events apparently this turn is what's going to happen. Okay. 
so he's going for domination in the Middle East, apparently. All right, I'll take that. Two victory points. A lot of these really suck. <laughs> Which one is he going to take? Madagascar or Djibouti? Madagascar, okay. He's got to have more Soviet events because I have all the US events. <laughs> So that lets him play um, play the ops points. Fantastic. I always think it's ironic when that gets used for a coup. Alright, which crappy event do I want to use this time? Well, let's see. I'm going to have to play two of these, so... Question is, which two do I want to? They're going to add two US influence in Kenya from this event. We'll play it for. Uh, I don't think I have any. Oh, I have this. But the options here is going to be. Well, let's give it a shot. So basically, when you roll this, you get to hopefully realign things and it's it don't it won't reach a point where I will have the ability to take it over but it will reduce their um, their ability to have it and maybe I can flip it next turn and I got no change so that was fantastic all right I'll try it again and we've got it so now he gets to put two in Kenya which is terrible for me, but what am I going to do? Oh, nice. Oh. Okay. What does this one do? Uh... Hmm. I'm keeping that. <laughs> I'm keeping that. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to discard this one. And designate. 
eight one. I kind of, I'm kind of tempted to keep that, but I only need one more. You know what? We'll discard this one. All right. Commit my decision. Now, what's he going to do with his two here? Go to Kenya. Okay. We are going to play this for its event, and we're going to pull them out of Egypt. Oh, he has to play the Romanian. Uh, uh, all right. I don't know if the eight victory points I have are going to be enough here because he... Uh, so... He got seven. It's going to be real close. I win. All right. Thank God. I really didn't know if I was going to win that game. So there you have an example of a game from, uh, from this uh, particular game, Twilight Struggle Red Sea, Conflict in the Horn of Africa. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, you know, obviously if you're familiar with the Twilight Struggle game, or the board game version of this, of course, this is basically the same thing. Um, then, but to get back to the point, I think if you have the original game, the first game, Twilight Struggle, and enjoyed that, you're going to enjoy this one as well. Especially if you have the PC version, because they play pretty much the same way. And um, also, I know that um, Jason Matthews has actually said that there's going to be another game, um, which I think think GMT has already has already said and it's going to be uh, South China Sea or somewhere so, somewhere in in Asia I think if I remember correctly so we have that to look forward to but in the meantime there's a whole lot of fun to be had with this one and obviously the uh, the the first game remains uh, number one with a bullet on the BGG chart for war games so um, obviously it's a it's a monster game in terms of popularity but it is an excellent game and so is this one so if you look for something that you can get the you know the twilight struggle experience without having to spend the time necessary to play the entire twilight struggle game which obviously has a much larger scope takes a lot longer to play this is a good option for you because this can be played in a half hour or so um, and you can extend it into a third turn as well and you have different um you can play it against the bot or you can play it against the ai you can play it against another person so there are a lot of options here and, and the game is relatively cheap it is currently on sale on steam but depending on when you watch this video that may no longer be the case but even if it's not i think it's like 15 dollars full price so that's not a not a bad deal you get a lot of potential gameplay out of this uh particular offering so uh Kudos to Jason Matthews, kudos to Playdeck and GMT Games for putting this out. Um, excellent game, as always. But that's going to do it. Uh, so, as always, I will ask you to consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing to help support my channel. But even if you don't, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, got something out of this, and we'll come back and watch something else at some point. So, for now, um, I'm Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered. And until next time, happy gaming.